Hey everyone, today I have what should hopefully be a short video tutorial for you, helping uh, clear up some of the questions and comments that people had on my previous video related to prepping models for use in Quixel Mixer. Of course, we're inside of Blender, so uh, most of what I say here will be relative to Blender, but you can also apply the principles to other 3D software of your choice. So before, I had a rocky sort of model that someone sent to me. We optimized it and cleaned it a little bit. And then we made separate UVs, uh, separate uh, meshes actually, and then we had separate UVs for those and we kind of rearranged the UV shells and everything. But we had separate meshes that were uh, separated out into their own objects and then I assigned individual materials to them with colors and then we baked down all those colors onto the one low poly mesh that we created in the end and then transferred that mesh along with the subsequent material ID map over to Quixel Mixer. And so I think that there were some questions on why I chose to use um, vertex groups, why I chose to use separate meshes, why I use separate materials, why I even baked it, and then what a material ID even does. Some, some people seem to be unclear on what that is. So hopefully I can explain that. Um, in this case, what we have here is a 3D dresser that I downloaded from 3dmodelhaven.com, which is a great resource. It's a CC0 models with textures that are completely fully made. They have nice UV layout and they're, they're just wonderful resources to have and use. So I've downloaded that. You can even get an entire Blender file that includes all the materials and textures in it. And it's great. So uh, this one in particular, I have removed all of the textures from the model and I have separated the mesh into specific groups that I wanna to use to apply my material. And we're gonna use that to create our material ID. Now in this case, I could have separated out, uh, separated the meshes out more and made it more complicated. However, I wanted to keep things simple. So if you've got a more complicated mesh, then the method for you may be to make additional objects and separate them out that way. Or you can work on this all together as one singular mesh and just create vertex groups, of course, name them appropriately. And that way you can make those selections on the fly and apply different materials to them or make different selections of them. And I'll show you a couple of different ways to kind of visualize this and what I mean by that. So before we jump into the actual work, I should mention something about the way that Quixel Mixer's UV system works in relation to some of the other software that we have. So if I select all of the parts of this mesh, which I've like I mentioned, split off into three different objects. And then before we export this, we're gonna combine it into one. Um, but before I do that, uh, let me tab into uh, edit mode. And you can see here on the right side, I've got a UV editor. All of my UVs are within the zero one space. So that's from 0 .00, 0 to 0 0.11. Um, and that's a, just a common phrase in the 3D world that mean this square here that we're working within. Um, in a lot of other 3D software, including here in Blender, uh, we can actually have shells that fall outside of that space and it'll just tile those shells. So the same texture that appears in the 01 space will also appear in the 112 space or 12 space or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it just tiles. Um, however, this is not how it works inside of Quixel Mixer as of the current iteration, at least to my knowledge. So as of October 2020, uh, you should only be able to use UVs in the 01 space inside of Quixel Mixer. They have not added tiling support as far as I know. However, there was a news uh, sort of blog post or something like this on their website where they said that they were working on a new version that allowed for multi-object support that possibly might include tiling and maybe UDIMs, but I, again, don't quote me on that. It's just a big hope because currently um, Substance allows for UDIM manipulation and tiling and things like this, multi-object support as well as object group support. Unfortunately, we don't really have that in Mixer as of yet, because remember the software is still in beta. So it's definitely something I'm really looking forward to and I really hope that they add in the future and I'll be happy to create video tutorials on that as well um, when the software gets there. And hopefully they'll give us an update soon. Uh, otherwise just you know keep an ear to the ground and we'll see what happens. So in this case, um, yeah, we can overlap our UV shells. And then of course the texture underneath that is going to repeat across those different parts of the mesh. But in this case, they're just laid out nicely by the person who created this model from 00 to 11. And so there we have it. 
So now that I've got that out of the way, let's actually get into the process of laying out our color ID and getting into Mixer real quickly. So the first thing I need to do is select any part of the mesh and I'm going to apply a material to it. So I'm just gonna click here and I'm gonna call this ID. You can call it anything you want. We're not gonna end up keeping this, but it's important that we have it. So now that I have this applied, if I go into my shading network here, or actually well, let's stay in the layout uh, the plane layout and I'll just change this into a shader editor and I'll turn on make sure that we have our material preview mode turned on and now what I can do is I can add a texture an image texture here so you can do that through the add menu and just search it up or I'll hit shift a and hit search and then image texture and this is what we're going to end up saving and using to create our color ID map so we need to hit new and I'm just going to call this dresser underscore ID and I want this to be 2K, so I'm gonna take this value and multiply it by two. So it's nice that Blender will do math for you, or I can just type in 2048. And then I'm gonna turn off my alpha and I'm gonna leave the color as black. So now what I can do is I can take this color output from our texture map and I can plug it into the base color. And you'll see that the mesh that I had selected that I created the material on has now updated to reflect that change. Now what I need to do is I can drag select over all of this, leaving the mesh that I had selected previously the active one. And with my cursor inside of the 3D viewport, I can hit control L, which allows me to make links between various objects in the scene and hit materials. And you'll see that all of these objects have now been updated with the same material. And you can also see that over here in the uh, properties panel. If I hover over this number three, it says display the number of users of this data, this material in particular. And you can see that there are three users that are making use of that material. And that would be these three meshes in our outliner. So there you can see how we have applied that material. And so now all we have to do is we have to actually create the color ID map. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna select a part of our mesh. We're gonna change from object mode to texture paint. I'm gonna hit the T key to open up my side panel here. And I'm going to select the fill option here with the paint bucket. And if I change this to a, a color, it can be any color. Uh, I'm just gonna click there and there you go. You see it's been filled. Um, and actually, so we can see more of what's happening. Let me open up a, another editor and go to my UV editor and then find the dresser ID, which is this map here. And you can see there, it's actually created all the color on this map. And so now we can see what we're doing. Hello, so I wanted to pop in really quickly in editing and show you something that I forgot to mention the first time I recorded this. And that's if I have a part of this mesh selected and I tab into my face mode and I select a face, say maybe the top face, or I can select multiple faces, so maybe the top and the front face here, and then I can go into my texture paint mode. If I have this option here uh, turned on, the paint mask option, you'll see that it actually allows me to restrain the painting that I do to that specific face. So if I change this into a yellow orange and I click here, you'll see that only that part of the object where I had those uh, faces selected um, are the parts that actually get painted on. So if you want to do your color ID map, um, texture painting in uh, on one singular mesh, and you just wanna create selections this way or um, create selections via the vertex group that you create, this is a great way to limit which faces get what color. And you can see that has updated itself here in the color ID. So I thought I'd share that quick tip that could be very useful to some of you and uh, you know continue watching the rest of the video and hopefully it helps. Switch back to object mode. I'm gonna select another part of the mesh, switch back into texture paint mode, and I'm gonna find a different color. So ideally, you don't wanna use colors that are similar, you wanna use colors that are different. And there are a lot of colors to pull from. It can be varying you know, brightness or darkness, saturation, etc. You just want them to be significantly different from one another and try not to use gradients. That way when we load this thing into Quixel Mixer or any other application that masks by color, um, it can actually clearly distinctly tell the difference between the parts of our texture that are being mapped with a specific color. So now I'm gonna pick something like a magenta. I'm just gonna click on here and there we go, that gets colored. And then I'm gonna switch back out. And the last one I'm just gonna select in my outliner cause it's a little hard to click sometimes. And then I'll switch to texture paint and I'm gonna pick a blue color just cause it's significantly different. And there we go. And if you look over here inside of our UV editor, you can see that everything has been updated with its appropriate color. Now the last thing, or one of the last things we need to do is we need to save this image. You can see this little asterisk here. 
So I'm going to go image, save as, and I'm going to save this as a dresser ID. Now you can see I've done this previously, so I'm just going to overwrite that. And then the last thing that we need to do before going into Mixer is select all of these meshes and then hit Control J. And you can see they become one mesh now. I'm going to rename this to dresser. And now I'm going to go file, export, OBJ. And then I can overwrite the previous one that I had. And I'm going to say selection only, even though I know there's no other mesh in the scene. I want to be very specific about what I'm exporting. And then I personally like to turn on keep vertex order, although that's not necessary. I like to do it just in case. And then I'm just going to export that. Now we can go over to Mixer and I can create a new mix, which I've clicked there already. I kind of had it prepared in advance. And then I'm just going to call this dresser. I'm going to make sure that it's set to a resolution of 2048 since that's what we're working with. And I'm going to hit OK and it's going to load up. And then I need to come over to my setting, uh, my setup options here, look for my model settings and type. We're going to change from plain to custom mesh. And then I'm going to load up the dresser OBJ. And you can see there we get our dresser. And then in order to get our color ID map, I'm going to head over to my layers and look for my base layer. And you'll see here at the bottom of the layer stack here, the, uh, the different uh, texture channels or whatever you want to call them, the material ID is what we want. So we're going to hit load and we're going to use our dresser ID PNG. And there we go. And then if I hit the eight key on the keyboard, I can actually preview that in the viewport. And so the bright green, I want to call metal. The blue, I want to call fasteners. And the pink, I want to call wood, just like I had done inside of Blender. And so there we go. We have those three separate groups that are designated by our material ID. And now what I can do is I can hit the one key. And this is on the alphanumeric keyboard, I should mention, not on the number pad. And I can start to add different textures. So, you know, maybe I want to add a wood in and we're going to map that to the wooded areas. And then maybe I'll add in a metal. And let's see, let's grab something like this and maybe we'll add in another metal, maybe something kind of brass. And then we'll add in another one, maybe this rusty one. And I don't know, let's look for maybe a smart material. So I'm going to switch this from surface to smart material. And you'll see we've got this dark wood grain that looks pretty cool. And I'm going to look for another one. Let's again, switch this over to smart material. And hmm, let's see here. We have a lightly scratched steel or a hammered aluminum or a grungy steel. Let's see. Let's go with a galvanized furniture metal. I think that's appropriate for what we're going for here. Okay. So now that we have all these different materials uh, added in here, it may be tempting simply to come down here and hit the add material ID on this layer. And certainly that is a valid way to do things. And you can kind of like, hide all the rest of these. That is a valid way to do things. And you can see there it's actually working properly. If I turn that off, you know, you can see I can switch between here. But I want to show you maybe a, a slightly more clever way of working with this. So I'm actually going to delete this ID mask and I'm going to create a folder a group. I'm going to call this wood and we're going to put both of our wood materials inside of here. So you can see there, that one's in there and then uh, the dark wood grain we can stick inside here and then we'll turn that on as well. And then we're going to create a metal one and we're going to create send our uh, maybe these two metals inside of our metal layer and where did my other metal go? Wasn't there a third one? Okay, so the other one, I guess I either moved it in there without thinking or it was there. And then for this copper one, we'll use one for our fastener. So what we're going to do instead of applying the color ID to the individual materials that we created by importing them from the library, we're going to create folders and then we're going to apply a, an ID map to them. So I could click here and then to preview which part of the mesh I want to put it on, if I have this ID map here and I hit Q in the viewport, it'll actually show me my various material IDs. And so I can find this one and click on it. And if I let go, hopefully I clicked on it properly. Let's see, it should be showing up. Oh, I need to turn the actual layer on. There we go. It'll show up. And so that allows us to restrain these materials via folders. So if we want to kind of switch between them and I'll show you that with wood, actually, that'd probably be the easiest one. The shortcut for adding a color ID map is the I key. And then I can hold down the Q button and then click here. It also, if you do that again, it actually takes it off. So that's a really handy shortcut. Or of course you can use the checkboxes here. There's multiple, again, multiple ways to do things. 
And there we go. And then you can see here, if I want to check between different types, I can simply toggle the material on and off in here. And then there I have my entire wood layer nested inside a group that has the material, uh, the mask on it. So that way I can try different things out. And uh, that's really useful. So again, I'm going to find this metal folder I'm going to hit the I key and then I'm going to hold Q and I'm going to restrain it to this. And then inside of here, I can start to turn some of these on. So there we go. So that's the quick and easy way of working with material ID masks inside of Quixel Mixer and how to prepare a, a material ID mask inside of Blender. And hopefully you found that helpful. I'm not gonna go too much further into the process of material design in Mixer in this particular video. Um, I think that's covered up most of what I wanted to discuss. So if anybody has questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, one more thing I will show, however, is like this also works with just regular solid layers. So if I want to change the color of this to like green or something, I can set the opacity down. There you go. You can see how we can quickly start to layer some things up and change them around. So there, there we go. So uh, that's why it's also a good idea to add the ID map onto the actual group folder there. So again, if anyone's got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I hope this was helpful to you. And I really appreciate any support. So make sure you like the video and subscribe, share it with anyone that you think would find it useful. And um, I look forward to uh, making more videos and I'll catch it in the next one. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching.